getting from uh, a B1 to B2 is the hardest, longest part of my language learning journey. Hi there, Steve Coffin here. And today I want to talk about the inverted hockey stick and language learning. So before we get into it, remember, if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe, click on the bell for notifications. And if you follow me on a podcast service, please leave a comment. I do appreciate it. So what is the inverted hockey stick and why am I talking about it? Well, let me briefly introduce this idea. It's, it's an image that I have used before. And the idea is that if you know what a hockey stick looks like, normally you've got a long shaft and a blade. If you invert it or turn it upside down, you've now got this blade that goes up like this and then a long shaft. And when we learn a language, we begin by making, although it's very steep and we're struggling very hard, but we actually do make fairly rapid progress. We learn some words. We understand some words. We can use some words. We think, wow. And then pretty soon though, we are no longer in this steep climb where we're learning a lot or think we're learning a lot. We now discover that it's a very long road before we achieve, you know, what we want to achieve, which is fluency, understanding movies, being able to converse with people. It's an awfully long road and the, the, the progress is, is, is actually quite slow. And that's one of the dilemmas in language learning is, is to keep yourself motivated during that long, slow period, that shaft of the hockey stick. So why do I bring this up now? Because the other day, my son, uh, because normally we don't go to the office so much anymore. And so the mail comes to my home, but some mail does go to the office and he brings home this um, very neatly wrapped package from the U.S. from an R. Rogers uh, in Lansing, Michigan. And there's actually a pretty steep postal charge there, $22. And it's addressed to me at my office. And uh, I'm saying, gee, what is this? I, I don't know an R. Rogers and it's very neatly wrapped. And so then uh, inside it is this neat package here uh, with tape. And, and then as I open it, it you know, it, you hear noise. It's got a, a very neat use of a Home Depot uh, box. And lo and behold, I find a hockey stick. Okay, now this hockey stick is for short people because actually in real life, the shaft is much, much, much longer as the uh, path to learning languages is longer. But, and it has a, a, a letter here. Hi Steve, a fan of Link and your YouTube channel here. I thought you could use a model inverted hockey stick with a few pointers, maybe as language level indicators to conveniently demonstrate and these are, are these different colored pointers. This is unbelievable. All the best in conveying, conveying an appreciation for language learning to your channel subscribers and link members, Russ, a fan from Lansing, Michigan. Okay, Russ, thank you very, very much. And you know, aside from the fact that it illustrates the hockey stick, Anyone who's ever considered learning languages, the community of language learners is so mutually supportive. I mean, Russ is, is extremely supportive and, and uh, you know, helpful and, and encouraging and stuff. But so many language learners are, when I go to the polyglot gatherings, everybody is so supportive. No one criticizes, criticizes anyone's level in the language and everybody's wants to help everyone. There's this great helpfulness in this community of language learners. So let's have a look at, at, at what we have here. So this is uh, the inverted hockey stick. And uh, so let's say that we have different colors. So when you are really doing well, you know, you are basically green. You know, the light is green. I think that's what probably what Russ had in mind. And uh, maybe that's C1, which is, to all intents and purposes, you're flying in the language. B2, which I consider to be my goal. In other words, and for those of you who aren't familiar with the uh, European framework, I mean, B2 means that you're comfortable, you make a lot of mistakes. C1 means you're really very good, you make few or very few mistakes. C1. C2 is like you're, a, you're as fluent as a native, basically. So 
So then, well, let's make that C1. Yellow is, when I approach a traffic light, if it's yellow, I'll tend to stop, which is what you're supposed to do. Uh, lots of people just go flying through it. They speed up when they see a yellow light. So let's say that when you're in the B area, um, B1, B2, you shouldn't, even though you're encountering difficulties, you should speed up like the guys that run yellow lights, the same, just go for it, run that yellow light. Now, when you're here, now, it, it, you know, as I'm doing this, I was thinking to myself, maybe I should have made the uh, shaft, okay? Maybe I should have put green colors there, uh, but I've started this way, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay with it. So here, with Russell's hockey stick, when you start at the beginning of the shaft, it's as if you can't move at first because you, the language makes no sense. It's just noise. Uh, but very quickly, you start to gain a bit of a sense of the language, but it's still a struggle, but it's a steep struggle. And because it's as if you're, if you're climbing a cliff and you're kind of getting a toehold and you're, you're actually moving quite a distance up, even though it's hard work, it's hard work on your legs. I don't know why I would go for, maybe I should change it. Maybe I should, maybe I should, uh, but, but I don't want you to stop uh, when you're at C1, okay? So let's say that it's red because there are barriers, but you're gonna break through the barriers and you're gonna break through the barriers as you climb that steep initial period uh, in learning a language. But then as you hit the shaft of the hockey stick, now you're in that middle period, B1, B1, B2, I guess this would be, but I, I should move this up here because I think B2 and C1 is so close that I can't really tell the difference. And uh, C2 is almost in unattainable. You know, if you get there, that's fine. You really have to focus on that language in great depth to achieve that. B1, or at least B2, C1 are both good goals to achieve. Maybe that's where, you know, you run, you run the, the trouble is the traffic light doesn't turn green, it turns red. And so if you run, if you try to run that yellow light and it turns red and there's a cop there, you're in trouble. So that's not very realistic. So maybe I should have done it the other way. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. The principle is when you start in the language, it's all noise. You work very hard. You, I listen many, many times to the same uh, content. So then I move on to this shaft of the hockey stick slow, slow, slow progress. Actually, I should move this up here because I think that getting from, getting from uh, a B1 to B2 is the hardest, longest part of my language learning journey. Once I'm at B2, where I can understand stuff, I can understand movies. I don't care if I make mistakes. I don't care if there's words that I don't know because there's so many things I can do in the language. So I will, at some point, Maybe I've moved to C1. Maybe I'd have to take a test to prove that I'm at C1. But either at B2 or C1, I'm comfortable. And as I said, this other C2 is just out of the picture, except for the real diehards. The, the difficulty is here. When we get to the top of the steep climb, high frequency words we're encountering over and over again, we're acquiring these words, we think we're making progress, and we turn the corner and we're in this area here where it seems like we can't remember anything. Uh, we're not very satisfied with our improvement anymore. And that's where you got to put your, you know, foot on the gas pedal, run that yellow light and take yourself up to B2. And once you're at B2, you can progress as much as you want. It depends on how much, you know, opportunity you have to speak the language. If you live in the country, uh, a whole bunch of things like that. So. Thank you very much, Russ from Lansing, Michigan. Uh, I don't know how you intended your uh, inverted hockey stick to be used, but I very much appreciate you sending this to me. And so I wanted to share it with my viewers and also to thank you. And I will be sending Russ a note. And I will also leave you with the previous videos that I have done on this issue of 
the hockey stick, the inverted hockey stick, and how we get through the doldrums, that long period when we think we're not making any progress. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.